Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Welcome back to my channel. I am Dom Lovely and I am your source for all reality TV, all celebrity gossip, all celebrity foolishness, you guys. Thank you for tuning in today. Consider this your, um, I don't know, you guys know I don't do a whole lot of face videos where I'm showing my face, but you get to hear my voice and I definitely will have some images for you. That's just kind of how I do my channel. You guys plug in, whether you're at work or working from home or traveling, plug in and let's get into this season three. Wow, I didn't think this show would make it to season, season three, but season three of Love and Marriage Huntsville, episode one. They're calling this episode Sisters in Brawl. I mean, to be honest with you, they should call it Sisters Who Stay in Brawl because there's always something going on, right? Okay. So first we kind of open up the episode and they're giving us clips of what happened last season with the drama with the Holtz and Melody and Martell, the breakdown of their marriage. And they're bringing everything kind of up to speed for us. So we see uh, the future site of Scott Manor. Now, this site has all types of complications, all types of issues. Apparently, they've ran into some roadblocks due to the rain and other construction issues not being able to actually work the land. So Marceau is talking to Uncle Mike about the plans for Scott Manor. And Mike is kind of like, yeah, you know, we want Tisha's input as well. And Marcel's like, listen, buddy, <laughs> you don't understand that, you know, Tisha's input is going to kind of hold this project up. But, you know, as the saying goes, happy wife, happy life. So I think Marcel is going to bend a little bit on that. So we see the brothers Marcel and Maurice together. <laughs> And they get into a conversation about Tisha and Kimmy's friendship, okay? Maurice is kind of like, you know what, not sure what's going on with the ladies. And, you know, he's kind of taken up for Kimmy. But Marcel is feeling like, you know what, Kimmy's the one that can bring them back together. I think that Marcel always feels that Kimmy is the more level-headed one. And... He is depending on Kimmy to bridge that relationship with her and Tisha back together. In my opinion, it's not so much Kimmy's responsibility and all the burdens should not fall on her. But yeah, you know, the brothers are having that conversation. And obviously, you know, in a relationship, in a marriage, everybody has their, um, you know, bedroom conversation. And I'm sure that Kimmy has expressed to her husband, um, Maurice, that, you know, she feels like she's the one having to forge this connection, this relationship back with Tisha, and she's not feeling it, okay? So the brothers actually bring up, and I did not know this, they bring up the fact that Martell actually was on the Steve Harvey show, and I guess he did a segment in their Strawberry Letter segment on the show where he apologized to Melody Holt. You know, it's very interesting that Martell often runs to these platforms to, I guess, kind of convey what he wants to say. And it comes across like he just wants the public to sway a certain way in his direction. Like he wants us to um, feel sorry for him or he just doesn't want to look like an ass in the court of public opinion. I'm sure it could have been much easier for him to go to Melody's home and her new home that she has with her children and apologize that way. Why is he getting on Steve Harvey and, you know, apologizing to her on air? So I thought that was, <laughs> uh, that's a mess actually. And is it, um, is it sincere? Probably. Martel strikes me as the type of man, you know, he has a lot of bravado and, you know, 
he thinks he's all of that, and meanwhile, he is attractive. But, you know, I, I still feel like there's deep love for Melody. And while I may have been sincere, I'm just saying he could have just called Melody. They could have just, you know, met over dinner and had a heart-to-heart. -heart. Even though they're probably in that, not even in that place anymore. Because we learned that she has actually, um, their, their divorce is actually final. So we see Melody at her new home. She's talking about how her divorce is final and she's ready to move on with life and managing her kids. And, um, you know, her focus right now is her kids and other business ventures that may come along. She's actually having wine with Destiny. And Destiny looks great, you guys. Um, looks like she's going to be a fixture on the show. And, hey, uh, we're learning some new developments about destiny and so they kind of get into that because destiny goes on to say that she had a meeting with kimmy and uh melody had been telling destiny for some time you know not sure why you and kimmy got off on the wrong foot because you guys actually have a lot in common so her and kimmy have a conversation i think it was um at one of the functions they had last season, you guys, I can't remember where they were at, but they had a conversation and Kimmy is basically like, so word on the curb is you and your husband are having some issues, you know, what's going on with that? And I guess Destiny was kind of feeling like, girl, listen, we're trying to forge a relationship now. We're not quite there yet, but um, for right now, I'm going to just need you to stay out of this part of my life and I will you know let you know once I feel comfortable talking to you about that so I guess destiny felt a way about it but you guys I did not realize that destiny and LB were having a uh, relationship turmoil it all kind of makes sense now kind of going back to that whole chicken thing because why was destiny so mad that Kimmy had referred to her husband as the chicken man. To me, it just seemed like she was kind of like overcompensating for some issues in the marriage. And she wanted to be like, look, I'm a ride or die. This is my man. You know, all of that. You know, because that whole comment shouldn't have been that deep. So we see now, sadly, that they uh, their divorce has been finalized. Like, it's over. Um, we see a flashback of... Destiny and LB having a disagreement about her taking his last name. You know, last season she did go on to explain that her brother had been murdered and she would be the only surviving person in the family to carry the name. So it was important for her to keep her last name. Uh, in my opinion, I'm a traditional woman. I, even though that was the circumstance for me, I would want to take my husband's last name, but I get it. So that couldn't have been the biggest issue in the marriage for it to end in divorce. I mean, they have a nine month old baby. So surely there was a lot more going on there. I definitely wish that uh, the show explored their storyline a little bit more last year so we can see how they got to that place. But they did not. So now this season we have Destiny as a single uh, woman uh, raising her child. Now she's telling um melody about this and mel is like girl you got a divorce it's been finalized last month and you did not holler at me you didn't let me know what was going on you know we're supposed to be good girlfriends i'm here for you and destiny is like yes all of that is well and cool and yes you're my good girlfriend but my situation was not like yours Y'all, it's not funny, but Destiny basically said, listen, me and this man, we had not been in this thing for years upon years and all of that. And when I saw it going bad, I got out and I'm not torn up, torn down about it. I'm actually seeing like a ray of sunshine. I was like, wow, because it just speaks to the fact that, you know, they had not been married that long. It got toxic. It got bad. They went ahead and divorced. And she's in a place where she says, according to Destiny, I'm good. I can move on from here. And I didn't want to talk to you about it because at that time you were still going through something. And she didn't want to put that on Melody. Right. Well, 
I wish Destiny the best. She's a beautiful black woman. She's a business owner. She seems very smart. So, you know, hopefully she'll find her a good man. So then we see Kimmy coming over to Marceau's place of business and bringing over those meal prep kits. Sidebar, you guys, like I've been wanting to try one of them, but there's so many now and I don't want to spend the money if the food's not going to be good. I just want to try it out, you know, because if you guys don't know, I'm a busy realtor in Charlotte, North Carolina. So if you're looking to sell or buy, definitely hit me up. <laughs> but during the week, I would like to do like, you know, a couple meal prep kits and just something, something quick and healthy. So anyway, apparently Kimmy is into catering now. That's, <laughs> that's new. Maybe they've mentioned it before, but I didn't know. I knew that she was in healthcare, and I knew that she was in real estate. But now she is in the catering business. Okay. So she's bringing over these meal prep kits over to Marceau. And um, he is asking her about, uh, <laughs> about Tisha's party. He is wanting Kimmy to organize it, plan in, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why do y'all keep putting all y'all stuff on Kimmy? As if she don't have her own life, her own career, her own marriage, her own situation. And Marcel was like, you know these ladies are not in a good place. Maybe you're thinking if Kimmy plans her shindig that they will reconnect. But Kimmy's like, no, I don't want to be involved. Kimmy is like, <laughs> why don't you ask Wanda to do it? Wanda's her mother. Wanda knows what she eats, what she likes. Why is this falling on me? I don't want to be involved. <laughs> so, you know, again, Marceau is trying to commit Kimmy to taking time out of her schedule, out of her life, to do a party for Tisha, which is so odd. Uh, meanwhile... We see Tisha at a boutique with her cousin, and they're talking um, about the party. Uh, Kimmy, I'm sorry, Tisha says she knows all about it. She's pretending not to know. And, you know, her and the cousin, they are having a discussion about Kimmy and her relationship with Kimmy. Um, let me just say this about Tisha. Girl... Tisha has to be a Gemini. I don't know if she is or not, but she is just like so needy. You know, like so needy for female friends, female attention, or maybe it's just, you know, that of Kimmy. It's almost like she wants Kimmy to be her mother, her father, her sister, her brother, her everything. It's like, it's just kind of odd to me. Like, you have a whole man, you have businesses, you have kids. You know, I don't understand collectively as a group. Well, I'll say with um, Tisha and her husband, why they need Kimmy to be so linked up with um, Tisha. Like, she can't be her hand holder. I mean, what is it? You know, I don't understand the whole issue. But, yeah, she seems very needy towards Kimmy. And it's it's kind of odd, actually. She's having a conversation with her cousin. And, you know, she's saying that she's not going to be the one to try to get things back on board. And she's done all she can, she can. And, you know, whatever. We'll see what happens, okay? Um, Now we see Martel and Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Martel is a very interesting man. I'm telling you, he's one of those men that, you know, they have such an ego. They can't admit when, you know, they need their woman to take that place in their life. And in this instance, we see where Mel's presence was definitely needed in terms of business as it relates to her and Martel. So Martel shows up to Destiny's um hair store, hair and product store, and apparently he's launching a, a new line of products himself. Something for men, I guess. And um, Destiny is like, dude, 
And have you done all of your paperwork? Like you have this product that you're promoting, that you're marketing, and you haven't done all of your paperwork. But before they have that conversation, they have a conversation about Martel posting a picture on social media about his child, his new child, with his uh, mistress. Okay, so <laughs> a couple of things here. Destiny, I think you were flat out wrong for telling this man that he cannot post about his child. Or, you know, I guess you can say you felt like some kind of way about it, but that's not wrong for him to do. He has said he has moved on. Melody has moved on. And why shouldn't he post about his child? Why, why shouldn't he be excited about that child or show that child love on social media? There's so much happening on this show. If that child were to see this show, who knows how, you know, they may feel. So, yes, why not? Why can't he post about, you know, his baby? And support all of the kids. Um, Destiny feels like it was too soon. She feels like it was messy. She feels like he wasn't showing any empathy or sympathy towards Melody. I don't feel that way. I think the kids should be separate. And Mel probably has her own feelings about it. You know, yes, that was a child that, uh, you know, was conceived during their marriage. And, you know... It may sting, but I'm sorry from Martel's point of view. I think the kid should be left out of it, and I think it's a. I think him showing the world that I support all of my kids is a good thing. As long as he's being positive and moving forward and being about the kids, I don't see where, where it's a big, you know, where it's a big deal. But Destiny felt the need to, you know, try to tell him, you know, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have posted about your child. I'm not in agreement. So they have that conversation, and as it relates to the products that Martell is now trying to shop around, you know, you can tell that had Melody been in the picture, things would have been definitely different <laughs> because she would have made sure that all the paperwork, all the signing of signatures, you know, was in order before he started trying to place his products in businesses to get paid. But he's basically saying that he wants to make sure that the divorce is finalized before he signs any documentation attaching him to any other business ventures. And that's why, you know, he's doing the marketing portion first. In my opinion, not a good way to go. So during that conversation, they actually discuss. LB and Destiny and what's going on with their relationship. And Martel was like, see, you know what? You and Mel, I see why y'all friends. Y'all got too much damn mouth. Now, you worried about me and what I'm doing. That's why you getting divorced too. Okay, Martel, low blow. I mean, you're supposed to be like her big homie, her big brother. Y'all are good friends. And I believe Martel and Destiny were friends before Destiny and Mel were friends. So, um, yeah, why did he why did he go so nasty with it? And Destiny's basically like, yeah, you guys can't handle a woman that has a mouth, that has an opinion, that's going to say what's on her mind, not going to let you run over us. So that's why it didn't work out. Um, I'm not exactly sure why LB and Destiny did not work out. It could be some maturity issues there. Uh, it could be the fact that she uh, has more business smarts. Um, could be that maybe LB didn't want to do reality TV. Who knows? It, it does seem a little sudden that the relationship is now over. So we see Melody taking a virtual meeting with some business partners regarding some business opportunities. And she really has been taking this situation that she is in and flipping it into, you know, creating business opportunities for herself and her children. And why shouldn't she? This is the perfect platform to do this. 
So she's taking virtual meetings and she also talks about her song that's on the charts and she is looking into doing a music video for it. I personally have not heard the song, but congratulations to her if she's doing well. That's great. So she gets a knock at the door and it is Chris. He comes by to ask about um, the 47 acres. <laughs> now, this has always been a point of contention because... You know, Chris and uh, Martel, they had their own conversations last season about these 47 acres and selling it or him no longer being a part of it because it looked really bad for business. Chris goes on to share with Mel that, hey, you know, I've been talking to the investment partners and we're actually thinking about building a new construction development on this land and we want you to be a part of it. So Mel is like, wait, hold up, you know, because how involved is Martel going to be? Because we know with his ego, his pride, his energy, his unwillingness to stay focused on this project. I don't know if I want to be involved. Um, what I say to that is Mel, girlfriend, if they want you involved in being the listing agent or um, running comps or helping to develop this community and being the face of this project, I say jump into it, you know, without any reservations because this could really be a great leg of business for her. And obviously, you know, these investors are seeing what Melody Holt can bring to the table versus Martel Holt in his messiness, and they like to move forward with her. So while Mel is very apprehensive, I think this is something that she's going to consider. I think her brand, her ties to real estate would make her uh, a, a really good option here. So now we get to Tisha in this grad party. Even before Tisha gets to the party, <laughs> there is drama. So we see Kimmy being confronted by Tisha's cousin and brother. Now, her brother wasn't that confrontational and not really was the cousin either. But just the fact that we're having this conversation about something that happened last season, it's like, ugh, let it go. And you can tell that Kimmy is getting very annoyed because she's like, you know, when did y'all hear, you know, me talking about Melody Holt? When did Melody Holt come up in the conversation with me and Tisha? I really like to know when you guys are having these conversation with Tisha, what is she saying? Like, why are we still talking about this? Why are we still talking about, you know, did I have Tisha's side um, less than I had Mel's side? And why was I not supporting Tisha? And to be honest with you guys, um, her cousin don't have a leg to stand on. I'm sorry. I know you're trying to ride or die for your, you know, for your cousin Tisha, but um, it just seemed like way, way too much. And Kimmy was, uh, definitely over it. And like she said, that conversation is old, trivial, tired, and through for sure. So, um, <laughs> Tisha arrives and, you know, she is, uh, getting her master's. I think it's her second master's and that's why they're having the party. But, um, everybody's there. The gang's all there. <laughs> and Melody Holt as well. And her children. And so is Tisha's family. And her husband, Marcel, gives her with a, I believe it was a Rolex. Um, so yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting because we see a lot of Tisha's uh, family more than we've ever seen before. And uh Tisha's cousin, I think it was either her cousin or her net or her uncle, they were having a conversation with Marceau and they're like, Yeah, you know what, we're the family from the other side of the tracks that you were talking about. And I was thinking, why is this relevant again? Because it got kind of tense. And I was like, Oh, you remember if it was was it last season or the season before, Marceau made a comment about, you know, hey, I pulled you from the other side of the tracks. 
Um, when he said it then, it was basically like, look, I brought you from nothing to something up to my level. That's how he was, that's how it came across then. And so the uncle kind of had to remind him that, yeah, we know about that comment that you made. You know, we not, you know, we not really feeling that. So then <laughs> Marceau tries to flip it like, I was just saying, you know, y'all from that side of the tracks. I'm from the other, other side of the tracks where we, we weren't living in the projects. We were homeless. I'm like, okay, sir. Sure. Sure. That's what you meant years ago when you said you pulled Tisha from the other side of the tracks. But I digress, you know, and you can tell that the family wasn't really buying it either. <laughs> so in the final scenes, we see Letitia and Kimmy have another conversation about the same thing over and over again and Kimmy is like I mean I feel like a broken record so I know I have to sound like a broken record Tisha is saying that you know when when things were going bad with me and Mel I didn't feel like you had my back you didn't call me you didn't text me you didn't write me no love letter you didn't show up to my house with no lunch or wine and Kimmy's like on the reverse side of that when Maurice's ex was coming at me, calling me a home wrecker and all of this and all of that, you didn't see it for me either. You weren't, you know, checking on me. You weren't coming by the house and I didn't feel like support either. So why do you feel it needs to be done for you? Kimmy says she feels that Tisha is um, spoiled, like a spoiled little brat, bratty sister. And she feels everybody needs, needs to bend to her to support her to coddle her, to nurture her. And that's how it's coming across is like, Tisha just be needing too much. Like if you need all of that, go to your mama. Kimmy is not your mama. Go to Wanda. That's your mom. Now Tisha does say that when she was growing up, she did not feel that love and affection from her mother. She knew her mom loved her because she bought her stuff and supported her well, but she did not feel that. So yeah, she kind of looks, like, looks at Kimmy like a big sister and I guess like a mom and <laughs> you guys Kimmy does not want that role at all she just wants to be the sister-in-law where they can kiki and have a good time and you know enjoy life she don't need all your you know mama drama put on her shoulders um Tisha does it and so does her husband Marceau he expects that of, uh, he expects that of Kimmy as well all right guys you uh you guys stick with me I will be doing videos on this season. I also will be doing um, videos on um, The Real Housewives of Potomac and Power Book. Book two, what is it? Power with Kanan. I'm very interested interested to see how that's going to go. Yeah, so um, definitely thank you guys for listening in. We'll talk soon. We will definitely chat again. Bye.